petty, I'm petty. I don't want your man, but I fuck him for fun, cause I'm petty. These bitches be playing, they thinking it's sweet, but don't make me get petty. I'm petty, 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 I'm petty. I don't want your man, but I fuck him for fun, cause I'm petty. These bitches be playing, they thinking it's sweet, but don't make me get petty. I got my own shit, these bird bitches living off they man. That's that broke shit, these weak hoes need to go run up them bitches. Shit, I make these niggas block they main bitch Then I follow and DM a bitch I'm not to play with I take her man if I want to At the crib we gon' kick it like kung fu Well you got to sleep mouth with a tongue do I ain't friendly with hoes that get ran through These bitches be talking, they act like they with it Bitch, I'm on your head just like can't do Really popping that shit that they can't do Really popping that shit that they can't do Because I'm, I'm petty, 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 I'm petty. I don't want your man but I fuck him for fun cause I'm petty I'm petty, I'm petty, I'm petty, I'm petty. You was rapping, the, I saw you, you was rapping the dude part, the stuff she was talking about, the, the dude, I'll do with your man. Metaphor. You did that. That's your uh, did, man. First of yeah. all, you're petty, nigga. Listen, that was petty levels, man. <laughs> you're I'm petty, petty. Murphy. Yeah, nigga. that was petty levels. I'm petty, and he's petty, because I showed you rapping the dude part. But one thing, you're now tuned into me, 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 yeah. I don't know what the fuck's going on with my mic right now. What you got right there? Oh, you got your little stuff that you like. Hey, you already know, That's why man. you be uh, acting on smooth. Uh, hey, absolutely. <laughs> All right, let me tell you all something, man. Before we get into me and I was worth a game, let's give a shout out to our sponsors, CBDMD. This is the shit. Listen, anybody that's, that, that takes CBD for pain, for whatever you take it for, when I tell you CBDMD is the shit, listen, 2020 award winner, you know what I'm saying? Best CBD sleep aid, period. 500 milligrams of high quality CBD with melatonin, valerian roots. Uh -huh. this, this shit is the shit. You know what I mean? I, like, prime <laughs> example, you know me. I don't play no games. You know, I, I, I don't just talk about it. I show y'all. Like, because they don't understand that we don't take on a product that we don't absolutely. No, that's why you be relaxed. I don't know. Because we can't take Imagine if you took them in jail, you was relaxed in the yard, laying there, like you was just, <laughs> you was relaxed and you just went to sleep in the yard on the grass. There you go. I'm just saying, next I'm just, door laying on the lawn with Sean. I'm just saying, <laughs> if you laying on the, you laying on the yard and stuff, man, it's like it get real crazy real quick with you. <laughs> I'm just saying these gummies are the best, man. They get real crazy. Three hundred milligram. They got look, they got the CB, the CBD MD Recover, fifteen hundred milligrams inflammation formula. Look, they got. The cold therapy pain relief, 1,500 milligrams. Mm -hmm. They got the aloe vera cocoa oil. So sometimes at the, like a basketball game, I come home, and these drinks good. I come home, I take a shower, and then I got the shower. You know, I might have a couple Why of Why you want to lick your hand when you put it in your mouth? That was some spicy shit. Oh, it's good. Listen, you, I might have some joints and shit that's hurting. You know, all I do is rub myself down. You don't let Tootie rub, rub you CBD, down? No. I'll if you was in jail, you was getting that. Would you let somebody your celly rub you mm -mm. down? Why would I let my celly rub me down? You always think about shit you did in jail and then try to asking. put that on me. I'm just asking. Mm -mm. But you rub yourself down with the CBD, MD. I'm telling you, man, this shit is the real deal. Also, if you want to get the CBD, mm. go to CBDMD.com. Make sure y'all punch the promo code in GAME. G A M E for twenty five percent off your purchase of your high quality C B D oil product. C B D M D man, listen. Don't go nowhere else. There's there's no other reason to go nowhere else. You feel what I'm saying? They they make all the products that you need. Anything you need that come in a C B D form, C B D M D has it. So make sure and, and let me tell you something. I'm not just telling y'all to go get a product that I don't use. I use this shit religiously. You know what I mean? I got a gang of things at the crib that's open. I just didn't want to look, you know, unprofessional and bring a bunch of shit in here that was open. So I brought the things the that I had. The tubes all burnt out. <laughs> right. I lube the, tubes. I brought the things that I had. Lube <laughs> tubes. They look like lube tubes. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, listen. Let's get into me and Osworth again. Uh, how important is it to grow up 
with both family with both uh parents in the household i think it's very important like how I, like number one how important is that and number two if you didn't have both parents in the household are you allowed to make any excuses? Because you know, I know motherfuckers. No, who, ain't no excuses. I know motherfuckers who you know. Ain't no excuses. Motherfuckers be thirty five years old, still blaming the reason why they wasn't successful was because their dad wasn't in there. Like my dad wasn't in my life. My dad was in my life. Then I'm like, nigga, I know motherfuckers that grew up in a foster home with mm-hmm. no parents. And yeah. Still was successful. Still beat the odds. Still they had their back against the wall, and they still came out a winner. So, for me, you know, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm a guy that grew up, I didn't have my father into my, in my life on a normal basis until I was about 15, turning 16. Mm-hmm. And as crazy as it sound, being from North Philly, Area Avenue, it was like, that shit was normal life to us. Mm-hmm. Because none of my homies' fathers wasn't in their life. And that's some sad shit as black people, man. Mm-hmm. Because now, like, as a kid, you normalize shit that seems normal to you. And the fact that none of the friends I grew up with, Sadat, Zeddy, name them, all, all my homies. Zeddy. None of our fathers was around. Mm-hmm. Like, that's really some sad shit. But can, when you but, think but can about you use it as excuses to be a loser? No, well, at, well, I never used it as an excuse. I just used it as a fuel to understand. And I didn't even the fact that my dad wasn't around in my life, the early part of my life, that never really fueled me, like on some. Uh, I'm gonna be the greatest basketball player because my dad wasn't around. I'm a, whatever I was doing, I'm gonna be the best at that because my dad wasn't around. No, that just really fueled me to be like, I will never have kids and I'm not a part of their life. Like, it didn't fuel me in the other way. Was, I worked harder because my dad wasn't in my life. No, I still did the same shit. I just was like, when I get kids, my kids ain't gonna never not know what it's like to not have me be a part of their life. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it was never no excuse because to us, it was the norm. It's as crazy as it seems now, that shit was the norm for us. So, you know, how important do you feel it is that I, I think I think when when people grow up with both parents, the importance of growing up with both parents really come from the love that you're supposed to receive and the love that you supposed to to see your father give your mother and the you learning how to treat women just through looking through your eyes, not somebody having to tell you or teach you, you just looking at a grown man and how he treats your mama. But at the same time, you got motherfuckers that's grow up with their mom and dads in the household and it'd be some of the most toxic relationship, toxic shit a child could ever go through because the, the dad beat the mom the fuck up on the norm they always arguing they always the kids is always involved Mm -hmm. they always right there in the mix so you know it could go both ways man you know you could have you could have some 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 kids that grow up with they with their parents in the household and they really grow up in a fucked up environment yeah you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So So for you, how, how do you feel? You know, I don't. I feel like you know. I, I would have loved for my father to be there. I had stepfather, but I would have loved for my father. He was here sometimes. He was in prison or whatever. But when he was there, it was cool. But it was like I would have loved for my father to go there. But I knew I still had to be. So one day I have kids. I had to be who I wanted in my life, and I just had to turn it up no matter what. I wasn't the one that, that was like, oh, and I used it as an excuse. I, I will say I did some dumb shit in my life. I went to jail, did all that shit. Uh, if my father was there. Would have been differently. I don't know. Right. But uh, because you you came across a gang of motherfuckers in jail who had their mom and their dad, and they still uh, was I'm in talking jail. About, uh, but I'm talking. About I came across. You'd be surprised how many people you come across in jail who actually have good upbringing, good family, didn't need to do nothing for mm-hmm. crime. They just might have started doing shit because they was getting high, or they just wanted to be down with some shit that really didn't matter in life. Mm-hmm. But you really have some good like, like it's some it's some it, it, it was some some dudes that was good people like. And just out of nowhere, just snapped the fuck out. 
And it's like, Dad, you had, and you see them on the visit. They coming up. They mom and dad up there every week. Right. They don't want for nothing from, they getting everything. You know what I mean? It's right. like, and you're like, yo, what the fuck was you doing some dumb shit for? But even us, we had to excuse self in our mind that because our people wasn't there, we allowed to do dumb shit. Right. And it's, it's crazy. It's real crazy. Like, you know, my, I ain't had no mom. I ain't had no, I mean, my dad wasn't there. I had to do, I got in the streets. It's like, people do use it as a crutch, but it's so many more people that don't have uh, a, 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 that don't have two parents in the house that's making it happen in life. Absolutely. So that, no excuses. But uh, you know what's important about a family? Now we're talking about family. What if I told you, you know, my people over here at uh, Simple, Simply Safe, right? One thing I like about Simply Safe is for 50 cents a day, you can protect your home. Mm. You can put protection on your home. Mm. Mm. Put this right in front of your home. Look, look, I got the whole kit right here. See, I got, I got everything right here. See? I got the sticks right here. Stakes you put in your yard. My fault. Put this, put this right there. Put the stakes in it. Boom. Put this because you're letting them know. Don't even try it, robber. <laughs> protect bad guy. Simply safe. Bad guy. Listen, simply safe. Listen, they gonna protect you. Listen, I got everything right here. Look, you see, everything's right here. It's simple, man. And it take. Listen, listen. It'll take you probably no time to put it up. Look, look. The keypad right here. Look at it. Everything is. Listen. Everything is right here. Listen. Listen. We got the motion. Listen. The motion sense. Look. Look. Everything is right here. Look. Everything you need. Had to bring a sample. The sample was the name here. I hate. I hate getting this. Shit. Look. Is your new house protected listen, by Simply Sim Safe? Simply Safe, baby. <laughs> everything is cool. Look, everything you need right here. Listen. Look. You see this right here? See the station, the base station. Everything is right here for you. Everything you need. Everything is right here. Look. And it was easy for me to put mine on, but I just want to show people because sometimes they need to see it. Everything right here. Think about this. They go to the base station. We talking about fifty cent a day. I'm talking about 50 sip with home security. There's two ways you can go about protecting your home. There's a traditional way. So that's way like for, yeah. $15 a month. It's nothing. Listen, 50 cent a, listen, 50 cent a day. So you, you can know, protect your family simply, for $15 a month. It will blanket your whole home in safety. Your whole home will be blanketed in safety. You barely know this is, you'll barely notice it's there. But what's truly remarkable is you can set up the system by yourself and take like 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Me, I'm a hyper man. I do I think the kids is worth 50 cents a day, $15 a month. Damn, I thought it would be worth more, but damn, I mean, the, fact that, the fact that you're getting a deal is like everything. That that deal is just like, oh, my God, they're hooking me up. That's all it's about. But you get, listen, and you, they come in a pack. It's coming right in a box. You get everything in there, and you can just set it up yourself. I'm telling you, here go the box. Look how big the box is. The box is this big. Everything's going to come in here, and you're going to put top flight. I'm talking about top flight security. Just imagine. Just imagine security if I was a security guard. Just imagine that. That's top flight shit. I'm talking about if I'm there, I'm there. I got my mace right here. <laughs> I got my stun gun right here. I got my flashlight right here. I'm going to have like two, three flashlights. Just imagine if, listen, Wallow 267 packing your house and a car drive by in the middle of the night. Oh, car, what you doing? Back up. Back up right now. You're, you're driving too close to this house right here. I'm security of this house. Like, you'll be laying in bed and know because you hear me out there screaming that your house is being protected. By Simply Safe, you just saying, but it's the same thing as me just having me there, and you know, uh, uh, I'm talking about the littlest things. I'm going to back your house up, a groundhog. What you doing? Back up, <laughs> back up for makes you groundhog. I don't want to make you, but I got to back you. I'm gonna spray the mace near you so you can back up. Like that's that's great security. So so Simply Safe is like is almost like you protecting the house. Yeah, just everybody would want me to protect their house. <laughs> Like I'm talking about who you know that got like I would have I know because you up jail you was the cell protector. No, it won't one but I but I'm gonna have four flashlights, one on this hip, one on this hip, one on this leg, and one on this leg. <laughs> Nobody never had four flashlights on them. <laughs> and I'm gonna have a light hooked up so when I walk in, it, the light could be on the ground so I can see if anything's around in your house. You so nice. It's gonna be like the sensor for the house. Hey, but listen, man, man go to Simply listen, Safe. Go to simplysafe.com slash game, man. Simplysafe.com slash game. You get free shipping, 90 day. Listen, listen. Free shipping, 60 day. I ain't mean to say 90. 60 day risk free trial, man. You got nothing to lose. Listen, simplysafe.com. I think y'all should protect the baby. 60 days for 50 cent a risk free. Day. 50 cent a day. I'm talking about anyone That's can like do it. You can set it up at 30 cent. Listen, listen, man. The best security, man. I'm talking about they're the best security, man. Two time winner of the CNET Editor's Choice Awards. Listen, Simply Safe, man. Simply Safe. Go check them out. Simply. Where they check them out at? Listen, simplysafe.com slash game. Use the game code. Okay. Use the game code. You get free shipping, 60 day risk free trial. Okay. Simply Safe. Simply Safe. Let me ask you a question. What's worse? A woman 
who you see her on the gram, you know, you see her on social media. She got all the designer shit. But she got a raggedy ass house, a nasty, dirty ass house. Or a guy who you see all on social media, he got all the designers. Drip, 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 he drip. Drip, drip too hard and fucking run around no, no, off let's, his let's, way. Let's do our own song because it's called, our joint called Drip Lit. I'm 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 Drip Lit. Go ahead. Do something so, so you can add to it. Because you drip and you lit. Like you lit and you wear drip. Oh, okay. I'm drip lit. I'm drip lit. Mm. I'm drip lit. I'm drip lit. I'm drip lit. Drip, drip, drip. I'm drip lit. I'm drip lit. I'm dripping. I lit. I'm dripping. I lit. No, that was. I'm dripping. Oh yeah, you fucked up. That was that was some old head shit. You just yeah, I did fuck it up, but that's cool. That's cool though. So who's worse, a woman who's on social media? She got all the designer shit. But she got a dirty ass house. She do, like she don't keep her house up. But you go over there, she got goddamn. But just because the house, just because the house dirty, just because the house dirty, don't, floor, just because the house dirty it, don't mean a coochie's dirty. No, no. If if a bitch keep a dirty house, then that nine times dirty? out of ten, I'm that saying. ass stink. Like, cause bitch, you don't even clean your house. Why I'm supposed to? Uh, I had a girl when, when I came up. I had a, when I came up, I had a girl that had a dirty house and a coochie was clean though. She was clean. She was a clean chick. She was a clean. She was a clean chick. I'm not even saying house. you got a fucked up house. It the house could be nice. You just got a dirty ass house. You feel what I'm saying? Or a man who got all the designer shit, but this nigga ain't even got a house at all. He's a house hopper. Woo! And let's be for real, with some house hopping niggas out here that's living nah, good. I'm not gonna. So he got all the designer shit. All the time, but he house hopping. But he might stay with this bitch tonight. He might be. And listen, I'm gonna tell you something. At one time, I'm gonna keep it all the way real. You My, was a house. Hopper. I was a house hopper. I used to. I used to blaze bitches. Go from house to house, blaze bitches. You know what I'm saying? I always had my own spot, but I ended up staying with a bitch that night. So, but I'm saying this nigga ain't got no spot. But this nigga, I'm talking about this nigga got a thousand dollar pair of sneaks on every day. You hear mm, me? Damn. Like when you say spot, you saying he don't have nothing in his name where he no, at least he ain't got nothing spot. in his name. Who worse, nah, the girl think. or him? He's way worse. How? She got a dirty I, house. She that, can, she, today she can say I'm gonna clean the house. Somebody, her aunt can come over and say, no, we got to clean this house. Yeah, but at the but end if of you the ain't day, got no spot, you come on, man. And day, you got thousand dollar sneaks on. But at the on, end man. of the day, is the bitch's mentality though? Yeah. Because the bitch is online. The bitch look flawless online. You hear me? This bitch, this bitch. How, uh, 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 all the IG chicks, how many you think, uh, uh, out of 100, out of each 100, how many of them is, is living like that? 55, 55 out of 100 bitches got dirty houses. Damn, that's a lot. I'm telling you, these some dirty house bitches, man. That's a lot. They, they, they the motherfucking DHPs, man. Damn. It's a bunch of dirty house bitches out here, man. I'm telling you, let me tell you something. Because, it, because let me tell you something. A lot of people... Worry about the exterior and not the interior. And not the interior. What's going on inside? Right. You feel what I'm saying? That's just like, like, that's like a motherfucker who run his car through the car wash, but don't get nothing done to the inside. Inside all dusty. He don't give a fuck. Long as he could pull up the outside of that motherfucker clean, he don't give a fuck with this. You, know, you, know you get crazy? the inside of the nigga car, he got sneaks you know everywhere. Crazy? I invented nigga. some new shit when I had a. When I had my uh, minivan, that minivan was a legendary. I, you know, I, I, just for the record, the minivan was before, before April. Yeah, yeah, the minivan. But the right? mini, yeah, the minivan is when I used to listen. One thing about the minivan. I Let me ask you a question. The minivan was before April. Yeah, uh, years before April. A yeah. year. Probably. How many bitches did you fuck in the minivan? Was you the minivan warrior? Was you the MVW? No, that's when I was practicing uh, a celibacy. I wasn't get the having fuck sex out at the time. Here. But I will say this: I pulled up on you on the back block. You was blazing the back. <laughs> Was the windows foggy? Was the windows foggy? Hey, I pulled up on a black block. He was blazing. <laughs> well, everybody, to everybody, don't know. I used well, to. I used to live in my minivan, basically, right? The minivan was like, throw your hands in the air, <laughs> and wave a blanket. Just that motherfucker was rocking. Us. Listen, I actually listen. When I was living with Nanny, y'all, I was I was living it. I was I living in my you, minivan you, you too. Hit, I know because you couldn't blaze in Nanny Cripps. So you used to blaze your bitches in the minivan in the cold. <laughs> No, that was warm. That motherfucker. No, I'm saying it cold. was cold I outside. I had a blanket. I had a blanket and, no, and a nice I'm pillow. From, uh, it was, it was I went cold. to Ross and got a whole set. <laughs> I got a whole set of Ross. Right. I got. Listen. I had these unbelievable. Yo, yo, Ross. Listen, Ross had these unbelievable goddamn uh, pillows and the blankets, and it'd be cheap. It's on the low. So I went in there. I'm, I'm walking by the aisle. You know me. One thing. I'm walking by the aisle. I said, Damn, man, this shit gonna cost me. I gotta put gas in my joint. I look. 
I said, oh, don't threaten me with a good time. I caught a sale. You know, a sale in there is like getting shit for free. <laughs> it was already cheap, but a sale on top of some shit cheap. So I grabbed the hookup, right? So I just had to set in my back joint. I had it in the bag, and it's in the, you know, thick, heavy duty bags. So when I go in there, I lay it out sometimes. Like if I know I'm going to go to the date, I have it laid out like it's a bedroom. So when you go, because the seats be down. So you go in there, the blanket set, the pillow set, and everything. I had a whole little hookup. Had my little laptop in there, and so, I had <laughs> and I had a wireless hotspot for the for the for the internet for the yeah. uh for for the for the uh laptop so we could watch. Netflix and all that. So I pull up, right? <laughs> so you had Netflix and dick in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so listen, I pull up, right? No bullshit. I pull up, right? And I don't know what I was thinking, but I pull up and the, and the whole set be set already. The MacBook back there, the, the, the blanket laid, the pillow laid out. So I'm like, damn, let's see. So how many bitches <laughs> laid in the back of that? <laughs> You'll be surprised. <laughs> you will be surprised, Wait, man. How many bitches? How many bitches? Made it to the back of that bitty <laughs> I ain't gonna tell you. You won't believe me. I ain't gonna tell you. But it was a nice and it was some classy bras too. You wouldn't even believe it. You'd be like, oh she? She was she she went on the date and she went on the date in the minivan? The the minivan theater. <laughs> that was a life. That was a hey. that was an apartment. Hey. A minivan is an apartment when you take the seats out the back. Like that was literally so my on, give us give us some roundabout number. How many bitches see the back of that? <laughs> I don't just throw some numbers out, and I'll tell you if you're warm or you're cold, man. I'm not going to. No, no. You, you're cold, man. No. Fuck no. Nowhere near 50. I wouldn't say that. But the minivan. Listen, anybody out there that want an apartment and don't. You want an apartment on wheels? Get your minivan. <laughs> get your minivan. <laughs> get your minivan. I'm telling you. Like, and, and then, then listen. Then you know what I do? This was so crazy about it. Sometimes I'll be like, Dad, you want something to eat? She'll be like, yeah, I go get the food first, right? <laughs> So I had a food laid out in the back, right? I pull up, right? And like before I get it, like, damn, where you at? No, I'm outside. Like I pull up. And listen, I knew all the spots where you could post post up, like dark blocks. Like, like you know how in Philly it'd be blocks where it'd be like certain trees and you could like park in a tree. I knew all the spots. And I, and I ain't go front. One time I knew, listen, I knew that I was ready to hook up and go on a date with this chick. I had the cone. I took a cone off Nanny Block. They had a cone. I took a cone, took it to the spot. So nobody will park there and put it right near the tree. So I put the cone in the, the, the reserve. You know how people reserve shit for restaurants? I reserved the parking spot because that was going to be my date, my date location. <coughs> Went back, got the drink, and it was it was nice. Man, I, I, listen, I, listen, I, I'm going to just say this. Hey, did you ever take a bitch in the back of the minivan and she said, I can't do this? <laughs> You'd be surprised. I never had that. That shit never happened. And you know what? I'm going to say this, though. And, and it's not putting no names on there, but I'm going to say this. I actually had a supermodel in the minivan before. <laughs> a real live model, runway model. Like real, not no, not no, I'm talking about a real live work for agency, real live runway model in that joint. So who you fuck put out? No, I ain't doing none of that. Who you fuck? That? <laughs> Is she from around this area? No comments. Huh? I'm not giving you no how to code. It's even New York and Philly. That's all I'm going to tell you. Mm. Hey, like, that minivan. You fuck the Victoria's Secret model in the minivan? <laughs> Listen, man. <laughs> Listen, if I showed you, you'd be like, damn. The MV. You, you know, but the you. MVW. I know. That's why I'm asking, because I, I, I know how many bitches no, I, fell I, I, victim to no, the no, minivan. You don't, you don't know. <laughs> I know how many bitches was, fell victim to minivan. I know damn. what you done last summer. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the minivan is like, like a minivan is an apartment. Cool, oh, oh, can listen, we do that? Can, listen, can we listen, adopt listen, the minivan as being an listen, official apartment? I'll be seeing bitches hell. I'll be like, you're a victim of minivan day. Yo, and do you know, do you know, do you know one time I got Uber Eats to the minivan? Like literally I was parked up and they pulled up because we was kicking. I'm talking about, damn, what you want to eat? Order some Uber Eats. It came right to the van because I was in front of this address. I'll be out. I'll be out looking, bitches. I say, you are a victim of minivan day. <laughs> The minivan boy. Minivan Dan. <laughs> and then one time I pulled Fuck up. Right? level off your jacket. <laughs> yep. One time I pulled up to Gil Crib, and he go to get in the car, and I had some workout gloves in there. He tells me, oh, would you snatch your bitches up? I said, no. I said, no. What the I fuck? He tell me, you just got the, the gloves. I get the minivan. We drive it. I just want to look back. Because you be sleeping in the minivan? Like, the fuck? No, that's what I be blazing all my bitches. What? I did you sleep in my minivan. I did. I ain't going to lie. I did. I had to. No, I didn't have to, but it was like that was my spot. Like, said, that was my place. See, I slept in front of Gil Crib one day. He didn't even dig it. I ain't dig it, dog. He was like, you here early as shit? I was like, no, man. I just pulled over. I was like, I was chilling, you man. fucked the bitch in my driveway. <laughs> Ain't nobody pulling up. No, and you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? Like, listen, man. Like, like that minivan life is everything, man. It's legendary. 
<laughs> this shit is crazy. <laughs> like that, can we, can we can we can we say that's official apartment? Can it, so if you if you a dude that got a bunch of drip, get you a fucking minivan. If you ain't got nowhere to live, get you a minivan. I promise you. I'm getting me another minivan, not for them purposes, but I just love this <laughs> the story that came with it. I t- listen. She told me you ain't getting no fucking van. You living in you living in the past. I said no. It's just it's it's, it's a part of my story to come up. <laughs> you see that bitch ass nigga tried to clean that shit up for April. That's why I'm getting another minivan. Not for them, but not for that though. Not no, for I'm, not, that. I'm not doing that. I don't do that no. <laughs> Different. Hey, hey, let's get into it. <laughs> that was crazy. Minivan. Minivan Dan. <laughs> That's the life, man. See all the bitches that got fucked by minivan. <laughs> 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 hey, let's get into the top five cereals of all time. Oh, my God. What's the name? Fruity Pebbles. Fruit Loops. Apple, Apple Jacks, Fruity Pebbles. I like... Uh, uh, honey Nut Cheerios. No, that's not. Honey Nut Cheerios definitely can't go in there. Why? Honey Nut Nut. Frosted Flakes. Frosted Flakes. Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops, Frosted Flakes. What else? No, no, no. Corn no, Pops. No, no, no. Fuck no. Corn in the pops? Yellow Box? Them Jones is bullshit. No, they not. No, they not. Corn listen, Pops listen. is the shit, listen, bro. Listen. I like to listen. And I like the- uh, uh, You like Lucky Charms. Honey Smacks. Honey Smacks is Oh, what's good. the name? But, 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 uh- What's the other joint? Uh, uh, uh. Honey Smacks is good. My Ra- Raisin Bran is my shit too, no, though. I don't fuck with and no hey, you shitting all bread. day. Like you be shitting all day. I don't fuck with no dry ass. Them my dumb joints. They clean you out. No, I don't want no dry ass Raisin Bran. Clean my top five bread. cereals of all time is Cinnamon Toast Crunch. They the shit. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. That's good. I got. I just gotta throw Frosted Flakes in there because they're Frosted great. <laughs> Frosted Flakes is legendary. <laughs> like Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops is always good. They good. Captain Crunch and Honey Smacks. Crunch Berries is the shit. Honey Smacks, I'm not throwing that in there. I would say mine's would be cinnamon. Listen, I would say mine's would be like cinnamon toast crunch. I would say fruity pebbles. Raisin fruity, Bran. See, Fruity Pebbles is good. Raisin Bran. But Fruity Pebbles get honey nut soggy Cheer- too fucking they do. quick. Honey Nut Cheerios is the shit. No, you be, no, you be liking that nasty shit. Raisin Apple Jack, and Apple Jack's probably. Raisin Bran is not that fucking good. No, Raisin no. Bran, listen, ra- let me get it right. Raisin Bran's, Honey Nut Cheerios. They two nasty joints right there. Apple Jack's. That's three nasty joints. Like Apple Jack's is Fruit just, Loops, oh. Crunch Berries. Yo, back in the day, they had the Smurf cereal. That, that was the shit. The Smurf cereal, the Blue Jones. They was my Jones. But you know, it's like it depends on how you feeling, man. No, honey bunches no, of oat. It don't honey bunches how, of oat. It don't depend on how you feel it about how good fucking cereal is. I don't know what the fuck you talk about. Your cereals is fucked. Oh, listen, one one more thing. What? I had some, <laughs> it was crazy. I had some. I used to, I had rubber made bowls inside of my <laughs> van, <laughs> and I ate some cereal in the van before. I pull. You know, how you, you know how you pull up. I got listen. I got the, the uh, not the the quart milk. You know the, the joint. Got a box of cereal one morning, pulled up. You know what I mean? Because because it was like I was at the gas station around the cranny corner from there, and I was vacuuming my joint out. And every time I would vacuum my my car, my uh, minivan out, I used to use air freshener to, to keep the, to get the, the vacuum smell good in the in the, in the carpet in there. Because mm-hmm. I spray, I had like this uh this cherry, joint, and I spray it on the joint, then I vacuum it and get in the vacuum. It yeah. was it was crazy. Yeah. That that kept my joint. That's why I used to get in. Like, ooh, smell good in here. I was like, yeah, don't worry about it. Go ahead, lay, go ahead, lay down. <laughs> Let's get a million dollars worth of game, man. You got some questions for me, man? I got some questions. Load up. I got some questions. Let's load up the questions, man. We yeah. we love y'all for calling in every week too and leaving y'all questions, man. Yeah, we gonna load up some questions on me and dollars. I'm saying we we really on million dollars worth of game. We gonna load up some questions. We really appreciate that. Load up some questions and we see what we got here with y'all. Let me see. Hey, it's Kiana. I'm from um, Baltimore, and I'm actually glad that you all have this um, this line because I was trying to ask my question on um, Gilly's live, and I never got through. So, hey, Gilly, hey, Wallo. It's Kiana from Baltimore. Hey, Kiana. So my question is, I've, like, kind of moved really fast into this relationship with this guy that I hardly knew or whatever. And we I moved fast, like moved in, in my house. And um it's been like three years or whatever. And recently I I had to move 
to a new house and he paid the security deposit and for the moving truck. But mind you, before before I moved or whatever, I let him, you know, welcome him to my house or whatever, and I was basically still paying all of my bills by myself. So now that he helped out with the security deposit and the moving truck, he felt like the new house is his house. And he is very disrespectful and very immature. Like, this is my first time ever dealing with a guy like this. So now, basically, I'm trying to get like get the money up, save the money up, and pay him back so he can get out my life because he's like a bitch-ass nigga that's like not going to leave because he paid uh, $2,000. They <laughs> yeah, two thousand dollars in four years that we've been together, and now he's saying that he's gonna keep like knocking on my door, being disrespectful, um, late hours of the night, coming drunk, like very immature little boy, little boy stuff, and um, I'm I'm trying to get out of the situation. I really am. But I don't want to be, like, harsh or cruddy, as they say, even though that's not the case because this nigga, he really owe up. But he, he's a chance nigga, and he's sparking over $2,000, so I want to give him this money, and then... That's too much. Come on, cut cut, cut off. I don't know. Hey, listen, first of all, First and foremost, first and foremost, shorty, your first mistake is you hardly knew a nigga and you moved him the fuck in. That's your first mistake. See, that's called a, a, a TB, a thirsty bitch. <laughs> you feel me? You can't be thirsty. Like, you can't be looking for some. You can't be looking for a companion so bad that you moving in niggas that you barely know. Like, you got to understand, if a nigga's going to be around two years from now, that means a nigga's going to be around six months from now. So you ain't got to move a nigga in the first fucking week, two weeks of you knowing a nigga. Because if a nigga going to be around three years from now, five years from now, he going to be around six months from now. Wham! So at the end of the day, that's where a lot of women fuck up. They be looking for that, they be looking for that motherfucking, uh, that companion they be looking for that the nigga to go home with and play footsies every motherfucking night. Yeah. But you done moved a total stranger in. Now, then you moved it. Then you moved the first of all, let's just say this. You on GBT, goofy bitch time. Because you moved the nigga in your household that you that you didn't even know like that. And you paid for everything. You just said you moved the nigga in and the nigga ain't gave you no money towards nothing up until you moving into this new spot where, <coughs> where he gave you $2,000. So that means you was on GPT. You was on goofy bitch time. You wasn't looking for a partner. You was looking for a grown ass kid. You was running a fucking daycare over there. Like, but then you want to be mad at a petty nigga when he do petty shit. First of all, let's just say this. If you bring a nigga, in, uh, women, let me give you, this is the best game I can give you as a woman. If you bring a nigga into your world that ain't got shit going on, how can you expect shit from the nigga? That don't make sense. Y'all bring these handicapped ass niggas into y'all relationship. Not talking about physically handicapped. Right. These handicapped ass niggas into y'all relationship that ain't got nothing going on in life. And then y'all expect the nigga to bring something to the table. Let me just say this. Bitch, you goofy. All right? You A-G-O-H hacking goofy out here. Fuck is wrong with you. You want to blame a petty nigga for doing some petty shit. Italiano, goofiano. Uh, yeah, just, yeah, uh, yeah, that's the Italian word. Just bitch, bitch, you goofiano, bitch. Yeah. What's, what's an Italian woman's name? You Lisa Gufiano. <laughs> Adrian! Yeah, Adrian Gufiano, bitch. I don't know. <laughs> hey, but listen, right? So at the end of the day, it's like, um, you live and deal with a petty nigga. When he do petty shit, you surprised. 
Um, Gilly, he only thing he did was giving me two thousand dollars. Well, let me tell you what petty niggas do. If they give you two thousand dollars to move into a crib, <laughs> that's his motherfucking crib too. He don't give a fuck about how many bills he paid in the past, bitch. We starting a new journey with this crib. <laughs> this my crib too. You got me fucked up, bitch. I just gave you two thousand, bitch. I ain't never gave a person two thousand dollars in my life. Bitch, I just gave you 2000 to move the fuck in. No, 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 no. Bitch, this ain't singular. This is plural, bitch. This is ours. This ain't yours. This ours. So at the end of the day, you expecting a petty nigga not to do petty shit. That just showed me you're a goofy bitch. You're on GBT, goofball <laughs> time. Like, you're on goofy bitch time. Like, for real, because... These women get with raggedy ass niggas and then expect a nigga not to be raggedy. That just don't make sense to me, man. You, you, what you see is what you get. Like, and the problem is a lot of y'all women get with niggas and y'all be believing in a nigga more than he believe in himself. Mm. I know you can do Talk it. to me. I know you can be great. I know you can do it. I knew you could be somebody. No, 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 no. Everybody that's born is not meant to be somebody. That's what make the world go round. Some niggas is meant to be bum ass niggas. Some niggas is meant to be successful ass niggas. Some niggas is meant to be in the middle ass niggas. You just, you're right there in the middle. You're on the verge of success, but somewhere along the line, you always fuck it up. That's what makes the world go round. That everybody's different. Just like some women is meant to be whores. Some niggas is corny niggas by nature. That's just what it is. So at the end of the day, it's like you can't mess with a nigga and a nigga ain't got nothing going on, but then you expecting a nigga to have something going on. That just don't make no sense to me, man. So uh, you want to get in? You want to do another? I'm going to do it. I'm going to play another Come one. Come on, let's play another one, man. I'll ask another one. Hey, what's up, Wallow? What's up, you daily? My name is Brawley. I'm from Miami, Florida. What's cracking, y'all? My question is the following. My father comes out February 21st, 2021. Old man did 13 years, kept his mouth shut. He went in when I was around 19. He's going to come out when I'm 27. He got out with good behavior. So, you know, he did like nine, pulled out like nine. But my question to you is, how should I treat him when he comes out is he going to be different you know all those questions you know how how is he going to fit into society basically you know that would be awesome if y'all could answer that for me because I know Wallo went through some of that so I want to know how was your experiencing transition from you know the fucking jungle basically to you know regular society that'd be a, that, that'd be a dope question I think y'all should put on, on the podcast thank you God bless y'all and everybody listening alright well I believe what I, what I believe is this this is what I believe. You know, your father went to jail, right? And uh, I don't know how, what, what was their relationship. I just think that uh, whatever their relationship is, I think he need to focus on this. If he went there and things was bad and you feel some type of way, have that conversation with him as soon as he come on. Because I don't know how old his father is, but a lot of times fathers be going to prison and they be young themselves. They be kids and they have a kid and then they, you know, come out or whatever. They And, and I ain't talking about the age, I'm talking about mentally wise. Mm -hmm. and they might have been running the streets, he might... So you don't grow, you don't develop like the women might develop. I don't know how the relationship was while he was in jail, but it seemed like he really cared about his dad because mm -hmm. he's calling us to see what's going on. Um, it all depends on what your dad was into when he was in jail, how he's going to come back out to society. Is his mind right? Is he is he willing to give himself some time? Do we understand that he got to get himself right before he can even help you in any type of way of life or your kids if you have any? Right. Uh, coming from jail, it's real hard because you got to think, it's a lot of fear coming out of prison. Because you, you, you wrote all these letters, you had all these words, you told all these stories to people on the phone and all this about who you're going to be, about this change, but you never really got a true time to change because you haven't been out in the real world right. yet. Temptation ain't come to you. You see, it was easy for me to say, oh yeah, I'm changed, I'm a different person, and I'm a different person, I'm there, I'm that. Listen, no, that's not how it go. You have to come out of jail first, so now he's out of jail. Hopefully, he showed actions now hopefully right. you say damn i want to start a relationship with my you know child i want to be here but i first you got to be there for yourself right but uh like everybody come home differently but i know people be scared to death coming home from you know coming home from prison because they whole thing is like oh man 
I'm coming home and it's like, man, I, I don't. You really don't know. Right. You you had these ideas right. of what you want to do, but now you got it. Now when you walk out of jail, you're on the big stage and it's time to perform. Right. You know what you going to do. Right. And so it's like you never you never know. I just wish your father the best. I hope he stay free. And um, and everything's possible out here. And let me just say this: one reason why Wallow Two Six Seven was able to come home from jail and adapt to what was going on out here is because Wallow 267 took accountability. He didn't blame nobody for him being in jail. He didn't come home from prison talking about the niggas who didn't put money on his books. He didn't come home from prison mad at the world like the world was the one who made Wallow run up into some shit and rob some shit and get caught. See, a lot of motherfuckers go to jail and and I'm going to keep it all the way real. A lot of niggas go to jail and be expecting more shit than was given. A nigga would be on the jail, a nigga would be out here on these streets hustling, doing all this shit, making money, doing doing whatever he doing. Nigga didn't look out for nobody, but then the minute the nigga go to jail, he mad because certain niggas that he didn't even look out for didn't put no money on his book. <laughs> like, this is the most goofiest shit in the world. So now, during his whole bit, he done sat up there and damn near made up a invisible beef with some niggas who don't even know he got a beef with them because they didn't put some money on his books. But when you was out here getting money, you never gave them niggas a coin. Why do niggas feel like Niggas is obligated to look, and why do niggas come home? I'm gonna give and, it to you. And, with with the with the the attitude. Oh no, man, fuck them niggas, man. I ain't fucking with them niggas. My nigga, y'all niggas was just on speaking terms when you was out here. What's up, baby? You my man. What's up? y'all niggas never did no business together. Why is this man it's obligated more, it, to put it's, money? It's on multiple books things. It don't shit. just be that. It seems like a lot of dudes go to jail. And they come home, and all of a sudden, they just super tough. Yeah, that's that's the other joint too. Like that, that's a part of it too. I went to jail. I did. I did time in anybody. jail. Now I'm tougher than you, dog. You was a bitch before you went to jail. You a bitch now. No, uh, no. I and, heard them niggas was chasing you all up and, to, and, to the tear. And, and a lot of times, uh, <laughs> people would do a crime and go to jail, and they just you know it changed. And then people be talking to a lot of dudes in jail that really probably got money. I mean, your selling might be somebody that really got money. So you listen to his stories, and now you coming home. Yeah, I ain't. This niggas in the way and. In a way, you just was in the way for like right. 15 years in jail. Right. I was out here. like right. So it would be like, it'd be a lot of shit in dudes' minds, but a lot of dudes would be in jail, and they'd see some. they might see you in jail and see people looking out for you, your boys looking out for you, and think they'd put all these responsibilities on, on dudes they was hurly, they was half-assed cool with right. from the neighborhood. My, like, your neighborhood might look out for you. Right. The chicks might send you money. They might come see right. you. Like, I didn't see it. I didn't sat there and seen dudes. Whole neighborhoods show them, hold them down, sending right. them pictures. But it don't go like that for everybody. Because what you really, what did you do out there for motherfuckers to show you love in here? Right. That's that's the whole game. So, because you know, motherfuckers that go to jail and and really be mad at a motherfucker like you got them in jail. For sure. Like 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 nigga, I didn't. Nigga, I wasn't even in the car with you or nothing when you <laughs> was doing that shit. Like, why? Now you mad at me because I only you when you was getting all the drug money and you was I I wasn't you wasn't breaking me off no money. And you was Johnny do that, <laughs> right? You wasn't breaking me off no money, and it just be it just be like crazy to me the the niggas mentality and the way niggas think. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's like. Like niggas who 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 get money to come back and be in the hood, it's like my nigga, you spent twenty years in the hood. Mm -hmm. You spent twenty five years in the hood. That wasn't enough. Then you finally get a blessing to make it out the hood, and you get the money to make it out the hood, and you come back to the hood. How the fuck does that make sense? It's just crazy. You know what I mean? Like, like when when you look at the scale of what real life is, niggas spend their whole life trying to make it out the hood. To when they make it out the hood and get some money, they try to prove that they still hood and go back to the hood. <laughs> it's like, nigga, you don't like nice restaurants. 
I like five star restaurants. You don't like top of the line hotels. You don't like taking trips. You eat bullshit burgers. You talking about five star restaurant? I'm, you would get a burger from any burger joint. Oh, give me a burger, burn uh, it up. Stop still, talking about five star restaurant. I, 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 you don't eat I, shit from no restaurant. But You're I fucking lying. You're lying, there, cuz. I still go there to dine. I take my wife to five star restaurant. But you don't like them yourself I, though, because you don't eat shit from there. At the end of the day, I do like because I like the ambiance. Of the restaurants. What the fuck you tell my ambiance? What right, the fuck I, I like the ambiance. I like, I like the. Okay, let me just tell you something. A, a corner Chinese store got a different ambiance than fucking. Uh, it just, it was the same thing to me. I'm not gonna hold you. It was the same ambiance. It was food on, on, on a tray or a plate. It was the same. Oh, see now you wanna you wanna accumulate jail. To to Ruth Chris now. Same thing. Food on a tray. Okay. Cool. So so. So a tray and a plate is the same shit. No, the fuck is not. The fuck are you talking about? Yes, it is. It's just, no, it's not. It's something that you eat no, your food no, the on. The fuck is not. It's something that you eat. No, if it was a Jeopardy I've question, never seen a it's nigga something on that you eat your food. Eat his food on a tray. That is. It's some, It's a, a plate and a tray is the same thing. It's something that you eat your food. Okay, so so you just so, eating your food. So, You're so, just using it to so, eat your food. So, I can eat my food so, on the table. So 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 when you go, so when motherfuckers go to decorate their houses with dishes and shit, why motherfuckers never get trays? If a food in the tray is the no, same thing, no. A tray is just a. F- all right, if you go to a picnic, you won't get a a, a, a plate, a, a plastic plate. It's the same thing as a tray. No, the fuck it's just not. It's the, different locations <laughs> no. use different type of equipment. No, the fuck. the fuck is you talking about? It's, it's using. It's the same shit. You eat your food on it. <laughs> hey, let me ask you a question. How important is it to to let people go that you've outgrown? That's extremely important. Everybody can't go. And I'm not saying you got to front on anybody, but sometimes you, separation lead to elevation. Right. Because sometimes people will be in the fucking way holding you back with all the dumb shit. Right. You know how many people out here that's making moves, and it's not that they don't love their homie, but they homie just still on dumb shit. Right. They homie, you got motherfuckers out here that's trying to do great things in life. They can't evolve because they got people around them that don't understand networking, that don't know how to deal with other people. And they just, right. oh, we tough. I'm hard. Man, get the fuck out of here, man. Right. Nobody cares about that. Right. And, and you have a, a homie that's talented that might be an artist that might could do something. They might have talents in all different types of ways of life. Or they might just be somebody that's creative in any type of way. But they, you just want to post up and think, because we live in a world where though being real is doing a bunch of dumb shit. Right. And some people can't get away from it. Right. How many artists went to jail or something happened because they was fucking with the wrong people? Right. And let me tell you something, man. Outgrowing people is a part of life, man. You feel what I'm saying? And you got to understand that outgrowing people and 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 sometimes you got to leave a motherfucker where they at man sometimes you got to love a motherfucker from a distance man that's just the reality of this shit because god don't put everybody in position to be great so if he give you an opportunity to be great you can't have energy around you that could possibly fuck your opportunity up Mm -mm. because they ain't got the same opportunity. You feel what I'm saying? Like when LeBron James is great, you know how many families eat off LeBron James? Mm -mm -mm. Talk to me. You know how many motherfuckers eat off LeBron James greatness? Talk to me. So at the end of the day, when God puts you in a position to be great and to do great things out here and to be a person that's, you know, in the limelight and and looked upon as a as, as a certain way. You gotta meet God halfway and accept that challenge. You feel what I'm saying? You 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 gotta meet God in the middle. Like, okay, you gave me all the shit to be great. Let me take this and take and try to take this to the next level. Not you gave me all the talent I need to be great and all the opportunity out here to be great. Let me take this shit to jail. <laughs> it can't happen like that. Let, let me sit in jail with my talented ass and talk all these stories about how talented I am. Listen to all these niggas tell me about how I'm the shit in jail. In the joint. In the joint ski. You the shit, man. Oh, man, you're popping. Oh, man, you popping out, man. You the nigga. I'm in the same. That's why when I got locked up, it wasn't no doing no rapping for me. Because mm-hmm. it was like, my nigga, I can't do nothing for you niggas, man. I'm in the same fucking situation you niggas is in. You you want to wrap, wrap your fucking self around <laughs> my fucking cell door and get the fuck up out this joint, man. <laughs> for real, and that's just the reality of this shit, low. So for me, man, 
to all the youth out if there. If you was man. in jail and nobody was there for you, would you be rapping for commissary? Shit, if your stomach motherfucking, <laughs> your stomach goddamn, your stomach goddamn yeah, sound man, like the lot. Motherfucker be like, listen, man, Gil, all I got is a bag of chips and two soups. How, what, what, that'll get you a verse. I could do a verse. You see, I came from the gutter, then I rose from the basement to the top floor, climbed a lot of champagne waste, and I'm going in. You going in about that shit? Like, I'm I gotta going. eat. I'm hungry and shit. And it's what? a game on, too. The Eagles play. <laughs> you like, damn, I, and you ain't got no TV because you fucked up, so you got to eat and watch it in the day room. So you're like, I need them two suits. And and then you go to somebody else. You got, what you got, candy bars? Or, all right, they get you uh, 16. you just doing 16s all day. I'm up there doing a whole album for niggas. <laughs> Every week you do an album to get a bunch of food in your cabinet. But a nigga did tell me about the one time that, that uh, niggas wanted you to rap and you wouldn't rap. <laughs> and a nigga said, eh, them nasty ass chucks. You got mad because a nigga t- disrespected your chucks. Then <laughs> you went down there and blazed the whole everybody. Yeah, I blazed that shit. <laughs> he said, you gave them niggas 4,000 bars straight. I, I gave it to him. They was like, oh, yeah, this nigga ain't playing. <laughs> he He's said, nigga, you rap so long, niggas ain't even had it. It's like, like, what the fuck is we going to say? This nigga just rap for 29 minutes straight. <laughs> Killed us. <laughs> he said, niggas ain't had nothing to say after that. Like, blazed them. Like, let's get into. Uh, Stories from the cell. Stories from the cell. Now, this story from the cell is basically, you know, because some people, they need to know about stories from the cell because they're going to jail. And I'm not saying it like I want anybody to go to jail, but some people, they just want to, their whole thing is I'm operating outside the law. I'm living a criminal life. Fuck it. Jail is a part of it. The death. Cool. So I just want to get them some tools that they're going to need when they go to jail. Okay. And the top, I'm talking about, listen, the top three to four to five jobs in jail. Number one, the prison kitchen. That was one of the greatest places for me to work due to the fact of, but some people would say prison kitchen and, and an industrial job, like a, 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 a CI job. A CI job is like you might be making mess, mattresses, you might be making tables. They get like more money. They get like- But let me ask you, but you in the, when you're in a prison kitchen, you get to dibble and dabble. You get to do your thing, so like you me. Make, green, you, 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 you eat make food. You throw a little something in your mouth. No, no, you can make your own stuff, like on the side. You can make your own shit. But what I'm saying is you cook and you don't be- <laughs> yeah, you could do some of that too, but you be able to make your own shit, so it don't matter. Like you be able to make good shit. It depends if you a cook. Like I was a cook. Now you got it. It might be between one and two. Is between some people were picking. Is between the prison kitchen job because the food you can always steal shit out the kitchen and you can eat good. In the CI job, that's the big time correctional job. Where though you might get top pay. I like, thought CIs was the niggas that snitch. No, no, it's a correctional industry. You, you want the no, CI called, job, huh? It's called correctional industry. Oh, all right. That's for CI job, but if you, if you would have been a snitch. Yeah. But whatever the case may be is, this the whole thing is. So you got that job, right? You you got that. So now it's like this. You get this. And then you got you got the yard worker. You got the person that work in activities, meaning they work in the yard. Some people that like to work out will work in the yard because they be there all day. Yeah. Working out, fixing the weights and all that stuff. You got the block worker. And block workers, could, you know, they get to do their thing all day in the... In the uh, on the block. They basically yeah. ain't got to go nowhere. They ain't got to lock up as much. They sweep them out the block. You got that. You got the hallway worker. Somebody that might work on the compound. That means you can run around the different blocks. Yeah. Pass it off and all that. And you got uh, people that work in the hospital. You got some people that work in the hospital want to be around the nurses, stalkers. You got some people that uh the captain of the swim team. No, they don't have them type of jobs you know, in jail. Some niggas is pimps, you know, like you. <laughs> no, them underground jobs. <laughs> they're like black market jobs. They're like jobs. <laughs> like They're like under the table jobs in jail. Like you don't, like for real. Well, which can, one made you the most money? Uh, probably kitchen worker. That was one of my pick. It made you more. Than, it made, that bought you more money than Ricky Minaj. Oh, whoa, whoa, come on! I, I, didn't, I didn't agree to that. I didn't say that I was doing. Pimp. I wasn't a pimp in jail. I didn't. But what I'm saying is that uh, for you guys that, that's doing anything, yeah, Ricky sucked their dick on the block. That's all. No, no, no. I don't know nothing about that. I'm not going to comment on that. But I will say that uh, before we get out of here, man, if you uh, check the, you know, when you hear this podcast, you can figure out what job you want. If you feel as though you want to be a street operator. And you're not getting out and nothing, you know, you think nobody's going to snitch on you or whatever. Good luck to you, man. I wish you the best. But uh, just in case, if you're going to job, them are the top jobs in jail that you could get. I wouldn't advise. I don't know if the uh, the pimp job is still open. I don't know. I think it might be oversaturated with that. Gil, you blew that whole pimp thing up. I think they busted, they busted a couple pimps in a couple prisons outside of Philadelphia after Gil uh, put that uh, stuff out there to the public on the podcast. <laughs> after they realized what you was doing out here, huh? <laughs> yeah, it might have been something like that. Hey, listen, man. So one more one more time, run down, run down to all the youth. Just understand. They go to top jobs. When you get locked up and you hit that prison. You need a job. You're going to need a job. We would rather you get a job. Out on the streets. Out here on the streets. With normal, with regular normal people that don't want to be involved in the bullshit 
get jobs at. So it's, it's either you can get a job on the streets or you can get a job in prison. And you get a job in prison, it's going to be one of these. Would you tell me, okay, kitchen? The top job is probably the kitchen between the CI shop. You got the prison yard. You got a block worker. You got a compound worker. And then you got all, what's other jobs you said it is? The black market jobs. Oh, then you could be a pimp. You could be a captain of the uh, of the swim team. You could be a shower lifeguard. No, the captain of the swim team and the shower lifeguard is like oh, the same. that was the same? It's sort of like the uh, same. You could be a captain of the wrestling team. You could be uh, the, the, the the basketball coach up there. What do you mean? You could be a... Uh, basketball coach? No, not really. You don't get paid for that type of stuff. Oh, you don't? Or you could be... I uh, thought, well, but if you as a coach and I'm a coach, be betting money on our teams. Yeah, you could bet it's money on black there. market. No, baby. you could bet money. You you could be a you could be a bookie. I know how much you could be a, going, right. you could be a bookie. You could a be a bookie, bookie. But sports bookie. Sports bookie in jail. Uh, do, do them niggas be burning niggas though? Yeah, they burn you. <laughs> Motherfuckers that disappear, take lock up over somebody fifty cartons. Because sometimes if you're a bookie, you might have and the whole jail might hit. Like you might have a big game and like a bunch of people hit tickets and it's like you know you can't pay everybody off. So. No, you can't pay everybody off. No, you got to motherfucker take a lock up quick. A lock up, I can't pay everybody. I was ass better with my ass, and I can't give it to everybody. Like, you would have been ass better in jail. Like, you'd be the type of dude that be bad people with no money. Yeah, he said you was an ass getter in jail. No, you was an ass better in jail. But they said you was an ass getter. No, I wasn't. I didn't do none of that stuff. You was getting a lot of ass in jail. (laughs) What the fuck? He said, "Next on laying on the lawn with John." No, I wasn't doing nothing. I wasn't doing none of that, man. Laying in a cell with low. No, no, that's you. <laughs> laying in the cell with Gail. Coming soon on the next episode of Laying in the Cell with Gail. That's your name, Gail. I can see you now in the jail. You would have been an ass better in jail. Would you have been a prostitute in jail? <laughs> <laughs> I can see you selling yourself in the joint. Oh, fuck out of I swear, if the time got hard, you would, and it was the Eagles game, or you had to eat, you had to eat for Eagles game. If what <laughs> you 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 will you, oh, you will put listen you'll be a boy of the night boy of the night shooby dooby you'll be a boy of the night in jail I swear you would I know you would about it the fuck listen if they it. told you in jail you couldn't watch no Eagles games and you had to do two years you would be a boy of the fucking night what the fuck out I'm, I know you would man you spicy listen what fuck you, you spicy to the motherfucker about the Eagles what the Eagles I can't watch the Eagles anything else I can do before I just make this decision get it can I can I be a lifeguard in Any, the shower anything for the Eagles. <laughs> You would do anything for the Eagles. You would give up your lash, your ass for the Eagles. It don't matter. That's hey, like, hey. Who you like more, the Eagles or the Sixers? Well, I'm from Philadelphia, so I like, I like them. No, you don't like them even. I you don't do. like them even. I no, do, you don't. I do, dog. Because if the Sixers won a championship, I'd cry too. I really cried real tears when the Eagles won that fucking Super Bowl. Man. You did, and it was it was just like it was just like this dude is a fucking. I, loser. I don't care about the Phillies the same. I was happy as shit when the Phillies won, but I didn't cry. And the Flyers, even I was like, uh, that's cool, but I ain't crying. Like I'm happy as shit, but I ain't doing the, the Eagles or the Sixers, old bitch. I'm I'm breaking down. This this shit's personal. You know what I mean? So, but listen, man, let's yeah. tell them about the merch. You got to check the oh, merch yeah, listen, out. Man, make sure y'all check the merch out, man. Check right the merch there, out. me and Osworth for game. See the hat. Me and Osworth for game. We got the yeah, bundles merch. going down. Hoodies, the hoodies, the hats, the t-shirts, ninety nine dollars. We got the t-shirts, multiple t-shirts, just said t-shirts, multiple hats. Make sure y'all go get them, man. Don't threaten me with a good time. Yeah, all types of colors. Make sure y'all. And then listen. He and lying on me. Listen, as y'all order the merch and y'all get the merch, please post it so we can post, post you. it on the stories and add us so we can show y'all some love and reshare y'all. In our merch, because we truly appreciate all the people that's buying the merch. This shit's selling like hotcakes, so obviously it's selling you guys like hotcakes. Are, and we're gonna keep changing the colors, the right? We're we gonna be games. doing some. We're gonna be doing some lives coming soon. Some Absolutely. live shows. We're gonna be coming to different cities. We're working on a tour right now. Absolutely, uh, it's ready. We ready to put it down. So we're gonna be coming to your city, and I'm gonna be bringing this nut right here with me. Uh, Get the fuck out of here, nigga. Use a nut. Uh, I'm glad it's night. You the you was a boy. You was a boy. You boy in the, you a boy tonight. Nigga, That's what you on boys and men. I'm wine. Yeah, you the nigga that talk. Yeah, this is Wallo. Uh, yeah, I, I really. Can't I'm joining you, Scotty. I really ain't got no 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 talent like that. So I just talk to all the bitches in a deep voice. And then I come on and go to the end. Of you come the on. This how you come on, boy of the night in jail. <laughs> you can have me if the price is right. The fuck out of here. <laughs> For Eagles game, hey, I get you. Hey, <laughs> you got the, you was a soul snatcher, Joe. <laughs>
<laughs> hey, listen, I appreciate y'all tuning in each and every week to Million Dollars Worth of Game, making us the number one music podcast in the country. We love y'all, man. I go by the name of Gilly the King. I'm Wallow267. And it's just like that. Right!